Hello, scholars, and welcome to our lesson on true and false equations and inequalities. This is in Equations and Inequalities and is part one. And the goal is that you'll be able to test if given equations are true or false and find solutions by making guesses and testing them. The reason we are doing this is that even when we do not notice, we are constantly using the skills and knowledge that comes with creating and working with expressions, equations, and inequalities to solve many of the unknowns and questions we have on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's begin. First, with a warm-up pop-up. It says, Diana and Silas were both competing to see who got the most headshots in their favorite Battle Royale game over the weekend. They each wrote down how many they got at the end of every game. What were the final results? So Diana's. And then we have Silas. So pause the video and determine what were our final results for their little competition. All right, doing a check-in, pause if you're not ready. If you first, Diana, chose to do 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, you should have gotten 22. With Silas, if you do 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, you actually should have also gotten 22. So if in the end you determined they actually, it was a tie, they got the exact same amount, then you are absolutely correct. With that, pause if you need to make any corrections, but I'm going to clear this up and head to our key concept, which is about number sentences. A number sentence is a statement of equality or inequality between two numerical expressions. Some things to keep in mind. It is only made with numbers, no variables. So 15 minus 2 times 4 equals 7, that is a number sentence. Meanwhile, 2x plus 2 equals 10, that is not a number sentence because it has that variable x. Also, number sentences can be true statements. So if we have 2 times 3 plus 2 equals 8, well, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8, so that is true. 8 does equal 8. Meanwhile, you can also have false number sentences. So we could have something like 4 minus 2 equals 10. Well, 4 minus 2, that's equal to 2. And 2 does not equal 10. So that is a false number sentence. It is still a number sentence, but they could be false or true. With that, Let's do some practice on determining if a number sentence is true or false. We have three different examples here. I do notice we have some fractions coming our way too. Which, hello, pump. They are here to remind us that you can turn any fraction into a decimal using division. You do not have to, but when in doubt, sometimes, especially when we're comparing numbers, it can be easier to have them as decimals. So we're probably going to do that when we get to question B. Thank you, Pop. So our step one is simplify both sides of the equation. Well, that makes sense. So if we look, we'll start with A. On the left side, we have 4 plus 8. On the right, we have 10 plus 5. Well, let's simplify that. 4 plus 8, we can add together. And 4 plus 8 is 12. So on this side, we have 12. We can also simplify 10 and 5 together. Well, 10 plus 5 is 15. So we have now simplified both sides so they each have just a single number. Our step two is we need to look at the number sentence and ask if the statement is true, the left side matches the right, or false, the left side does not match the right. Well, I'm sure you can already see that 12 does not equal 15. They are not the same. That means that this is a false number sentence. Let's go do the next one and use the same rules. As Pump mentioned before, we have these fractions here, which we could leave as fractions, but especially considering our other side has decimals, it'd probably be best to first fix that. So instead of one half, we can do one divided by two, which one divided by two does give us 0 0.5. 
plus instead of five eighths, let's find out well what is five divided by eight. And five divided by eight is zero point six two five. So zero point six two five. And supposedly that's supposed to be equal to one point two minus zero point zero seven five. Let's do some more simplifying. Let's combine some like terms here. We have 0.5 and we are adding that to 0.625. And I end up with a final number of 1.125 for the left side. On the right side, we're doing 1.2 minus 0 0.075. So if I take 1.2 and I subtract 0 0.075, I get 1.125. So even though in the beginning we started with the left side being all fractions and the right side being all decimals, once we simplify, we get a true statement. The left side matches the right side. So this is a true number sentence. We have one more to look at. And this one has some more work to do. First and foremost, we have a parentheses and there is something happening in that parentheses. And we can simplify that. We can actually find out, well, what is seven plus nine? Well, seven plus nine is 16. And we can't forget it was still being multiplied on two on the outside. And that is supposed to equal 72 plus 92. If we keep going, we can say, well, what is 16 times two? That would be 32. And we ask ourselves, does 32, is it going to equal 72 plus 92? I can already tell it probably doesn't, but I will finish it. 72 plus 92 is 164. Well, yes, 32 does definitely not match 164. So the third one is a false number sentence. With that, pause if you need to get your notes in. But the whole idea is simplifying the left side. And then simplifying the right side and asking, do they match in the end? If they do, it is a true number sentence. If they do not, it is false. And I'm going to clear this up and head to the you try. So it's time to see what you know so far. Pause the video to try this problem on your own and resume when you are ready to check your answer. The problem being, determine whether the following number sentences are true or false. And you have A and B. Alrighty, doing a check-in. Of course, pause. You don't have your answers in yet. For A, if you first noticed and chose to do some multiplication here, because you have 10 times 2, and you got 20, so the minus 7 equals 22 minus 10, you are good so far. From here, if you ask yourself, well, what is 20 minus 7? Giving you 13. And you ask, well, what is 22 minus 10, which should give you 12? You are still doing great. From here, if you notice, well, these aren't true statements. And if you determine that this is a false number sentence, then you are absolutely correct. Taking a look at B, you have fractions. So first and foremost, if you chose to turn your fractions into decimals, which is probably a bit easier, you don't have to, but you could. If you did 3 divided by 5, you would have 0 0.6. And if you did 12 divided by 5, you'd have 2.4. And we're going to see if that equals 3. From here, if you combined your 0 0.6 and your 2.4 and you got 3... Meaning you saw you had three equals three and you had a true number sentence, then you found this out correctly. Do take note, you could have also done this by leaving it as fractions, because if you did three fifths plus twelve fifths, you would get fifteen fifths. And fifteen fifths is the same as three. You do the same answer. And as always in math, there's so many ways you can get to the same answer. But no matter what, if you determine that three equals three, which is true, then you are doing it correctly. From here, pause if you need to make any corrections, but I'm going to clear up and go to our closing for part one. In this video, 
We looked at number sentences, which have the following qualities. Remember, it's called a number sentence for a reason. It does not have any variables. And as we discussed, it can be a true number sentence where the actual number equals itself, or it can be a false sentence where we have a number equals a different number, which wouldn't be true. With that, I'm going to wrap this up, but I will see you in part two of this lesson video.